very good morning and greetings to everyone out there who is watching our online service on this very day. The third Sunday of Advent is also known as the Gaudate Sunday. The Gaudate Sunday, unlike the last two Sundays, indicates that Jesus is near. Now this piece of news brings forth to our lives joyful expectancy. So, with this feeling of joy, let us all sing the hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Almighty God, 
to whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Shall we confess our sins through the words of the confession? Generous and merciful God, we confess to you and to our sisters and brothers that we have sinned against you, against one another, and against your creation in thought, word, and deed. Through our ignorance, our weakness, and our deliberate disobedience, we are truly sorry. Forgive us all that is past and grant us the gift of new life. In Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Now, my dear friends, let's look at each other wherever we are and say the following words of absolution. May God Almighty forgive all our sins and create in us a new heart. May God Almighty forgive all our sins and create in us a new heart. Amen. Together, let us say the college appointed for the day. God, for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of your son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right. With Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 64, reading from verse 1 to 4 and verse 8 to 11. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour, and the day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all who mourn, and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called the oaks of righteousness, a planting of the God, Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Verses 8 to 11. For I, the Lord, love justice, I hate robbery and iniquity. In my faithfulness, I will reward them and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with a garment of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and the bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up, and a garden causes the seed to grow, so will the Sovereign Lord make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. This is the word of God. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in my Savior. He has seen the humble state of my heart. And now I will call me blessed. Praise the 
the Almighty God. He's done great things for us. Holy is His name. His mercy is free for those who fear His justice. May generation to generation loudly proclaim His faith. He has shown the strength of His hand. He has shown the strength. Brought down the mighty from the Britain. Down the mighty from the Britain. He scattered the pride in their hearts. He scattered the pride in their hearts. And lifted the lowly to me. Praise the Almighty God. He's done great things for us. Is his name. His mercy is free for those who fear his justice. Many generation to generation loudly proclaim. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he sent empty away. He had remembered his servant Israel. The second reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 16 to 24. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophecies. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you. 
who also will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to Christ. Another in the fire is a song sung by Hillsong. And what I believe portrays the situation we are facing globally at this very moment. One can say that the lyrics tell us that we are not alone, no matter what situation we are in. We just need to be strong and be joyful. Let us sing together the gradual hymn, Another in the Fire.
that's where you'll be. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, reading from verses 6 to 8 and 19 to 28. Glory to Christ our Saviour. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. 19 to 28. John the Baptist denies being the Messiah. Now, this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, Why then do you be baptized if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Good morning. We have come to the third Sunday of Advent. The Church has set apart Advent as a time of waiting, of preparation and of expectation. We are expected to use this season to prepare ourselves to celebrate the birth of Jesus at Christmas and to look forward to his coming again in glory. The usual theme for the third Sunday of Advent is joyful expectancy. And I will explore this theme this morning. Let us pray. Father, as we look into your word, we pray that your spirit will open the eyes of our understanding so that we may hear and be transformed to become more like our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The COVID pandemic has turned our lives upside down. Nothing seems certain anymore. The things we were familiar with and took for granted are no more, leading at times to a sense of hopelessness and fear, fear of a very uncertain future. Community life as we knew it is gone. There are restrictions on our movement and our social gathering. We are often confined to our homes. We are being told to choose circles of people to associate with. And these circles are shrinking very fast. Many have lost their jobs or sources of income. The poor are being forced below the poverty line while some of the rich are becoming richer. Children's lives have been completely disrupted. On top of all this, our country's situation is fast deteriorating. We see abuse of power, human rights violations, people incarcerated without the due process of law being followed, people in custody being treated as dispensable, degradation of the environment with scant regard for rules and regulations, and on top of it, a huge debt crisis that is looming over us. We seem to have entered a strange new world, a shadow land from which there appears no way out, at least for now. This seems to be our reality. I now invite you to take a look at Mary in the Gospel of Luke. A young woman, a virgin engaged to be married, maybe like most young women, women of her time. 
Mary appears to be a respectable young woman because nothing controversial is said about her. And into this ordinary, everyday life comes the earth-shattering news that she was going to have a baby out of wedlock. What did Mary do? Did she react in disbelief with a sense of shock and angst? Was she angry with God? All of which would have been normal and expected reactions. But Mary's quiet response to the angel was, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. How is this even possible? How come Mary didn't go to pieces? In fact, when her cousin Elizabeth greeted her, Mary broke out in a song of praise. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. In today's epistle reading, Paul tells the Thessalonians to rejoice always. The Thessalonian church faced much persecution. In this context, Paul's call to rejoice always seems an impossibility. But the Bible is replete with instances where God's people exulted in him, especially in extremely difficult circumstances. David wrote Psalm 34, a psalm of praise and of confidence in God, when he had just escaped sure death at the hands of Saul, and then he had to pretend to be a madman to escape death in Gath. In the book of Acts, when the disciples were persecuted and scattered, the Bible tells us, that the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. So we see that this joy or the call to rejoice is not dependent on one's circumstances. It is not a feel-good thing. It is not putting on a brave front when everything around us is falling apart. It is not positive thinking. If we continue reading the Magnificat, we see that Mary had an intimate knowledge of God and she could rest confidently in that knowledge. In the same way, Paul, having told the Thessalonian believers how to live, assures them that the one who calls them is faithful and he will do this. In Galatians, we read that joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Peter, in his epistle, describes it as the inexpressible and glorious joy. We can experience this joy only when we grow in intimacy with God. It emanates from God and is not dependent on us or on our circumstances. We are privileged to be living in the time period between Jesus' first coming and his second, because Jesus makes God known to us, and we have ready access to God's Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth. Now, joyful expectancy is anchored in Christian hope. Christian hope is a certainty. Hope helps us to look at our present, through God's eyes while resting on God's promises. We know with certainty that Jesus will come again and that he will make well everything that is so wrong with this world. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. It is with this joyful expectancy that we are called to live. What does that mean? Christian hope is the light that shines in the darkness of this world, the darkness of poverty, of violence, abuse, insecurities, uncertainties, and the list goes on. Hope in Jesus is that vision that drives believers who work and witness in a dark world as they dream of a redeemed future. In the epistle passage, we see Paul challenging the Thessalonian beliefs to live faithfully despite their circumstances, faithful to God who had called them. In the gospel passage today, we see John described as a man sent from God. John was commissioned to be a witness to the true light. I invite you to imagine with me as to what John would have been like, a young man for sure, weird, maybe. But his no-nonsense message attracted large crowds, including soldiers, religious leaders, people of influence. 
John could have thought he was the greatest, but he didn't. John emphatically denied he was the Messiah. He made no false claims. He remained very true and faithful to the mission that was entrusted to him, even though at times he even doubted whether Jesus was the true Messiah. And eventually, it cost him his life. This is the kind of faithfulness we are called to, even as we are called to live in joyful expectancy. When Jesus was given the scroll in the synagogue at Nazareth, he read from the passage that we heard read to us today. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This is called the Nazarene Man Manifesto. And that's what Jesus did. And that is what we are called to do. As someone said, Believers owe their whole life in dedication and service to the redeeming God. We know uh, about tea estate workers in the upcountry who live in abject poverty and difficult conditions. We know of their issues because they get highlighted often and they are also becoming bargaining tools at elections. Now there are estates in the southern province where people live in worse situations because there is no one to champion their causes. And we have Anglican churches in these areas. One of them is in Deniaya, which is currently headed by an Anglican clergy person, Reverend Manjuka. Now, Reverend Manjuka works with uh, the community and she has uh, women's groups that are meeting together. And one of the things this women's group has been doing is to set aside a fistful of rice every time they took rice to cook. This fistful of rice was then collected and given to a family that did not have any food. Usually this rice is collected and kept for a rainy day. But here we saw God's light shining in darkness as few families were kept from starvation. These clergy work very hard and don't have much resources. The other example is from Alpitia, again headed by a female clergy person, working among people who are very poor, living in contexts of violence and oppression, without much access to services. They live in deep darkness. Since they can't meet together due to the pandemic, Reverend Selvarani visits this community in their homes and provides them with whatever support and spiritual nourishment she is able to give. She herself has limited resources. There is no vicarage in Elpitia. So she has to travel from Niagama where her husband, who is also an Anglican clergy person, is stationed. But she continues with the ministry entrusted to her faithfully without complaining. And again, we see God's light shining in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. This reminds me of a Sunday school song we used to sing. Jesus bids us shine with a clear, pure light. Like a little candle burning in the night. In this world of darkness, we must shine. You in your small corner and I in mine. We know who we are and whose we are. May our joyful expectancy spill over into the lives of others so that we become messengers, preparing the way for the return of Jesus. Please join in the concluding prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. As we pray together, let us dedicate ourselves to live accordingly. Let us pray. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying 
that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We come before you, Lord, and still our hearts, mind, and thoughts, and fill our hearts in praise and worship to you. We thank you with a grateful heart for your loving presence in our lives, Lord for your provision, protection, and blessings throughout each day. Even as we prepare to celebrate Christmas and the purpose of your birth, during these uncertain times with fears and anxieties that threaten to overwhelm us, not knowing what the new year will bring, help us to always remember your faithfulness, your goodness, and love. Teach us, Lord, to focus on you and who you are, which will enable us to find new perspective and understanding to continue to live our lives faithfully to you. Remind us, Lord, that you are the true light that gives light to every man who came into this world to show us that we no longer need to live in darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the Church and all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to come together like this through technology as one church to praise and worship you despite all the challenges and restrictions of attending church and worshiping together as a community. We pray that you will give us the strength and courage to continue to speak of you and be a witness unto you. We pray that you will remind us of how you have called us to carry your word to others. Share the good news of your salvation to those who do not know you, especially during this Christmas season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who may be struggling financially, who may have lost their jobs and livelihoods and are anxious about the future. We pray for those who may be in threat of contracting this dreadful disease or who may have already contracted it. We pray for your presence over their lives and your healing upon them. We pray for those who are sick and suffering, for those who are grieving, For those who are hurting and lonely, we pray that your love, mercy and grace will strengthen them, comfort them and guide them each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves, Lord, as we are faced with the many uncertainties brought on by a pandemic that has gripped the world with fear. Help us to adjust the way we approach these challenges by viewing our circumstances with an eternal perspective knowing that our trials are only temporary. Help us to remember that focusing on our troubles will only prevent us from believing that you will see us through. Teach us to continue to trust you, knowing that you are with us and that we can face our uncertainties by faith and trust you to help us overcome them. Help us and strengthen us to continue with the work that we are called to do and to depend on your strength and guidance. May we each day say of the Lord as a psalmist in Psalm 73, Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand, you guide me with your counsel, and afterwards you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. We ask all this, Lord, in your mighty and precious name. Amen. Let us continue in prayer.
Let us remember the members of our congregation and also the friends of the congregation, especially at this time we pray for the sick, the lonely, the most vulnerable, the feeble. There are some names to remember and I want to commend them to your prayers. The prayers of the faithful will always empower and heal those who are sick in body, in mind and in spirit. I pray for Mervyn Vijayasekara, Param Vijayaratnam, Dr. Priyanta Virasurya, Sheila Fernando, Dilpa Vijayavadana, Mano and Shanti Handy, and our own Sexton Daniel, recovering and he's looking forward to come home to be with his family. Now I also pray for those who keep their birthdays and wedding anniversaries. Especially pray for R.Y. Tambiraja, Joyce Pereira, Daryl Danaraja, Ishwari Ravi, who keep their birthdays. Gracious God, you have been gracious, faithful, and loving to these thy children. You have accompanied them through all the changing scenes of life. Continue to be with them. Continue to guard them and protect them. And also stir in them a spirit that they can become faithful members and they will always look unto thee in prayer for strength, for guidance, and for grace. Lord, hear our prayer. Let our cry come unto thee. We also pray for those who have been with us, but no longer with us. But their memories linger with us. And this day we pray for Alida Lillian Abekon at Trent Mendes. Gracious God, they are in your presence and may their souls rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Now let us sum up all our prayers and petitions by saying together the prayer we usually say. Haste, no Father, the coming of your kingdom and grant that we and all your servants being strengthened together in the eternal fellowship of the Holy Spirit. May with joy behold your Son at his coming again in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Now I have few notices and I want you to listen very carefully because these are very important notices and sometimes when I meet people I observe that they have not listened to my notices and they ask the questions that we have been emphasizing Sunday by Sunday. First, let me also welcome all of you from wherever you are listening to this service, maybe here in this country or in other places. You are part of our faithful community and we really are strengthened by your comments sometimes you send to us for these YouTube services or online services. I also want to emphasize that we do have daily services, Holy Eucharist services, at 7 a.m. Either Father Andrew or myself, we are in church waiting for you. And some days we go without having anyone. But 
some days we have few members coming. So learn also to make use of this time. Weekly services, don't only look for the Sunday service. You can always come to church before you go to work. You begin your day by being at the feet of our master, Jesus Christ. So remember, every day, seven o'clock, we have a service at St. Paul. We have also decided to open the church for 25 persons per service. Starting today, we have opened the church for several services, one at 6.30 a.m., another at 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock service, Tamil service, and then also 5.30. And it will continue right through uh, the coming Sundays until further notice. You give your name to the office and there's a register there and they will tell you whether the 6.30 service or 8 o'clock service or 10 o'clock service or 5.30 in the evening service that whether you can worship or the numbers have exceeded or not. So don't try to push only for the 8 o'clock service. I appeal to you. 6.30 service is also same inspiration. And then 10 o'clock service is also inspiration. It's in Tamil. And we also have 5.30 even song combined with Holy Communion. So, and also take turns. If you come this Sunday for 6.30, maybe next Sunday you can come 5.30 and give somebody else a chance. Or if you come this Sunday 8 o'clock, give somebody else that chance the following Sunday. So don't try to block only for the eight o'clock service. That's my kind appeal to you. And it will be a very simple service. No choirs in that sense. We may have about three hymns and uh, the offer will be taken and the communion will be administered to you. Please make a note of that. It's very important. And we will see until the government or the health authorities allow us. 25, I'm sorry, very limited number, but something is better than nothing. Therefore, try to make use of it and also give others chances and consider the others' needs also. There is also online service. While we have the 8 o'clock service in church for 25 people, there is online service at the same time. It will be different with hymns and songs and all that. But I encourage you to look at that. And also I encourage you, whenever you have time to come to church, we should not become lazy by looking at this, uh, or watching or taking part in this service at different times when our, at our convenience. That's very important. So remember, we also, that means every Sunday, we give you five services. It's not an easy thing. It's a big strain on the clergy, but we are willing to serve you. So that's the most important thing I want to say. Also, I want to remind you, we had a very long, long discussion yesterday at the warden's meeting. And we discussed about the church's finances. We are doing well, but not so well. Because we always had contributions from you. We can call it tithes or whatever it is which helped us to take us through the month to meet all the requests, the charities, and contribution towards education, all that kind of thing. But this last three months or four months, it has fallen short of that. And I know that some of this money is with you. You are waiting to come to church and offer it. And I give the bank account also now. You can make a note of that. Or, uh, so it's very important that your contribution is given to the church and it does not go into, in a sense, a fixed deposit. It goes to serve the people. And I believe and I trust in you that you will really give uh, what you have. I know you're also facing a financial crunch. 
and that we are fully aware. But out of that, give something to us, those who have nothing, those who have nothing, and that's important. Christmas also, we have decided, instead of the Christmas dinner, we will give hampers for the parishes, uh, from parishioners who really need, and also outside the parish, in the community, all that. That true, I have asked for some contribution. I have sent a letter, to email to each one of you, giving all the details. So please respond to it in a positive manner. That's very important that Christmas hamper. And Christmas Day services, as well as the New Year service and the carol service, we will let you know within the next few days. So those are the notices I have for you. But remember, I have sent you an email, each one of you. If you have not received it, please call the office, the number given here, so we can get in touch with you or post it to you or even uh, read to you what's in that email. God bless you. Enjoy your time. Never give up hope because God is in our midst. And that's the meaning of Advent. God breaks in to shatter darkness and give us the hope. And that's the hope we live. And we live for that. We live in that and live for it. May God bless you once again. It's time for the peace. Let us greet one another with a Christian greeting. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please turn to one who is on the left or right and greet one another with the greeting of peace. Father Andrew, peace to you. God bless you. Peace to you. Peace to you. Jesus is near. Let us all sing the song, You Are My All in All. to prayer, please join me from wherever you are. This prayer is very important prayer. And also reflect on the words that's written here. All things come from you, and of your own do we give to you. Creator and Lord of the universe, ever adored by the holy angels, accept these gifts which we present at your holy table. And with them, the dedication of our lives to your service, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the Lord's Prayer.
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing. Perhaps like me, you've sung this hymn for years in church, at home, with your family, gathered with friends and neighbors. Perhaps you've sung it to yourself in your car on a walk or quietly in the dark of night. Joy to the world. While we may not feel joyful this year, as the pandemic of disease continues to bring sickness and death, when fear and mistrust, a darkness, threatens to overcome the light, we, as followers of Jesus Christ, must bear joy to this aching world. We must shine light into the darkness. Joy to the world. Like much in our lives, Proclaiming joy is difficult work, also good and essential work, especially now. Though we mourn that which is lost in our lives, our families, and our communities, joy to the world. While we strive to pull up the twisted and thorny vines of hatred and bigotry and anger, joy to the world. Through streaming tears and gritted teeth, joy to the world because God is breaking into our lives and into this world anew. While this is a strange year, the ministry he gives us remains the same. We will prepare him room in our hearts by taking on the ministry Jesus demands of us. Feed those who are hungry. Welcome the stranger. Clothe those who are naked. Heal those who are sick. Visit the prisoner. Love God. Love your neighbor, sing joy into this old world, prepare him room. St. Luke writes of the first Christmas, Mary gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. There, in the simplest bed, in the cool of the night, in a trough in bands of cloth, lies the one for whom no room was made. And yet, strangely, there lives the one whom not even the universe can contain. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. In your hearts, in your homes, in your lives, prepare him room. God love you. God bless you. And may God hold us all in those almighty hands of love. Now I say the words of the blessing in the same hope may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all for now and forevermore joy to the world the lord is come go in peace and love and serve the lord joy to the world the lord is come Let us all express the joy of this third Sunday of Advent by clapping and singing together the final song, This is How We Overcome. You have done my morning. 
rolling in the dancing. You have turned my sorrow into joy. Your name lifted me up. Stand on higher ground. Your brave. Turn my morning into dancing. You have turned my sorrow into joy. You have turned my morning into dancing. You have turned my sorrow into joy. This is how we overcome. 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 Jesus Christ is coming. Jesus Christ is coming. Jesus Christ is coming. This is how we overcome. Jesus Christ is coming. This is how we overcome. This is how we overcome. You have come. Yeah, let us all be joyful, for Jesus is near. Thank you everyone.